Hot starts are a concept I feel like I got introduced to maybe some, some point in my CrossFit training career, but the, the concept that it goes against traditional strength and conditioning training format. So when you do a strength conditioning session, you typically would do your strength and then conditioning afterwards with the thought that we don't want to use conditioning, high intensity conditioning at the beginning because it may disrupt optimal strength gains or the op optimizing the performance in your strength lifts or your, your barbell lifts for the day, which there's still a lot of mer merit to that. If you really want to have a big focus on Olympic weightlifting, powerlifting, you would want to minimize whatever nervous system impact you would have beforehand from a conditioning session. However, in all the years that I was training with for CrossFit, the idea was that, you know, you had to be prepared for anything, the unknown and unknowable of the competition, which meant that we might do something very hard aerobically or anaerobically conditioning, and then very shortly thereafter have to go lift weights maximally. So we trained different formats to try and prepare for that. And ultimately, we ju I just learned over time that there was far too much fear around conditioning first and strength training second. That like, you could do a considerable amount of, of conditioning work and then go into strength training and not have a dramatic impact. Certainly not for individuals who are not worried about, you know, competing on the world stage and having world-class performances. If you're looking to get good training in, the impact is negligible in most cases. And in some instances, conditioning first actually made the strength training better. And why was that? Well, there's this very, very common mistake that I have seen in athletes, but also in general population, which is don't warm up enough. You don't warm up enough and so you get to your strength training and the first five to 10 sets are kind of a waste anyway because you're just getting your body to wake up. You're not actually digging into higher threshold motor units, that's like muscle fibers and getting that deep contraction that's gonna maybe create the stimulus you want. So doing these hot starts, it's basically inside of the Persist Program Functional Bodybuilding Methods. We do conditioning at the beginning that are these kind of short bursts, like what you saw today, or an aerobic challenge in the eight to 12 minute range that kind of pushes you a little bit, gets your body and your brain to warm up and wake up even more than a traditional warm up would. And so now I'm about to go front squat and like, you know, I'm ready to go. I'm not tapped out. I didn't go overboard, but I'm ready for some heavy front squats. So that's it, hot starts. The vast majority of everything I do for training, I like to use flat, minimalist shoes. They replicate just walking barefoot. That's the idea, the concept behind it. And why do I care about walking barefoot? Well, I don't really wanna walk barefoot because, you know, concrete doesn't feel great. <laughs> um, I don't really like to rough up the bottoms of my feet too much. But, you know, when your feet are bare, when you're barefoot, the way that your, the muscles inside your feet work, and then the way the muscles in the ankles, and then all the way up into your hips and into your upper body, the way those muscles interact 
is very different, vastly different than when you put them in a shoe that has a lot of support built into the shoe. So what might be optimal for like the maximum performance output, you know, you wanna lift the heaviest weight, you wanna run the fastest, you probably want to use some footwear to enhance your body's stability and positions. However, for general health, general strength, making sure that your ankles and your knees and your hips stay strong and balanced and healthy, a minimalist approach for me, I found to work so much better. And so that's what I use most of the time. But like I said, sometimes you really wanna push your intensity and the footwear itself can support that. So I'm gonna squat heavy, and this is the one portion of my session where I'm gonna switch into these shoes because they're gonna provide me a little bit of a heel lift, which for me is gonna make me have a more upright posture when I squat. There's also stability, side to side stability, so I'm not gonna be worrying so much about balancing side to side. This is gonna allow me to lift more weights and just focus on uh, providing force in this direction. And that is by design. I want this to be the most intense portion of my weightlifting day. And as soon as I'm done with this, I'll be switching back out and I'll do some supplementary uh, exercises too. So in a given week, I'll probably put shoes like this on twice for squatting or Olympic lifting, and that's about it. And the rest of the time, I'm going to get plenty of intensity you know, in my minimalist shoes. And that's what I walk around with every day of my life. That's how I function as a normal person. So I wanna be able to take what I can do in the gym, translate it to my day to day. Uh, and lifters, in my experience, wearing them too much, which I did early on in my fitness career, I relied on them heavily, uh, led to a lot of knee and ankle and hip problems for me. So since I've gotten out of them more, I've had fewer aches and pains and injuries. And that to me is what training's all about, staying pain free and feeling really good and looking good and moving well. Okay, squat. high likelihood that if I didn't have these shoes on I wouldn't have hit that last set and you might say okay well what's the well, just don't wear the shoes and you know you get the same intensity just at a lighter weight and that's also true I'm you know making that choice to put on some supportive gear to help me you know for my this is like one of two exercises per week that I'm gonna really push you know, push myself even beyond what my body could do without some equipment on. For people that are in sports and they're chasing high performance for, you know, points, they might be doing that more often. I find that, you know, once or twice a week to kind of push past what my body's highest threshold of intensity could get without the gear is really helpful. Um, and so long as I can do it and stay safe and stay feeling confident, I think it's a good, it's a good balance.